Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are talking about the story of my tattoo sleeve. I've talked about this a little bit in other videos, but I thought I would sit down today and give you guys the whole story from start to finish on how my tattoo sleeve came to be what it is today. Because there's a lot of ups and downs and there's definitely a lot I think you guys can learn about what not to do when you're getting a tattoo sleeve from my story. Quickly, I did want to thank everyone who has engaged, commented, and shared my last video on gatekeeping in tattooing. If you haven't seen it, the link will be here right now. All the AdSense revenue from that video is going to be donated to the Black Fluidity Tattoo Club. So if you could check that out, that would be greatly appreciated. But let's get into the story of my tattoo sleeve. So let's start with the roses on my shoulder. These roses I got in 2014 in Santa Cruz, California at a tattoo studio called O'Reilly's. I got them done by tattoo artist Jason Anderson. I think he tattoos at a new studio called Fog City, also in Santa Cruz now. But I got the roses on my sleeve with the intention of getting more tattoos on my arm, but I had no plans exactly of what my sleeve was going to be. I think at that time I really gravitated towards American traditional and I think I had in my mind that I would get the kind of American traditional sleeve where you see a bunch of different American traditional pieces on someone's arm and they eventually form a sleeve. I don't know if you guys can hear Olive purring in the background right now, but she's sitting right next to me just being so cute and I can't get her to move. So the roses were the second tattoo I ever got and I do see the comments that you guys leave me asking for a tattoo tour. That is coming soon. I am going to film that, but I've been waiting because I don't want to be in the middle of a tattoo project while I'm filming that because I know that something's gonna change pretty soon after. So it is coming, but for now we will have to wait. So for the sleeve that I have now, I started it in June of 2017. So that is four years ago now. So it's been a huge amount of time and a lot of that time was in between two different artists who have worked on my sleeve. And I'm not gonna say exactly who was the artist who started my sleeve because I don't wanna put them on blast. And I think a lot of the issues that we had was confusion on my end about what I wanted in the direction of my sleeve and some miscommunication on his end exactly of what he was going to do. So it's not that anyone was more at fault. I think we were both not in a great position to be creating this tattoo. So I'm not going to say his name, but no shade to him. It was just miscommunication on both of our parts. So I knew I wanted to get a Phoenix design on my arm as my next tattoo. That's like the one thing I was sure about. And I wanted to get a Phoenix because I am a girl in a boy and girl twin. Here's a picture of me and my twin, Devin. And in Chinese, the word for boy, girl, twin translates to dragon Phoenix. When I was 10 years old, my family moved overseas to China and we lived there until I went to college when I was 18 years old. So growing up in Chinese culture has meant a lot to me and my family, especially me and my siblings. So that is why I wanted to get a Phoenix design. So like I said, the only thing I knew for sure was that I wanted this Phoenix design. I didn't have a lot of other ideas about style or placement or flow with the sleeve as a whole. I think I still had the idea of getting kind of like a sticker type of American traditional sleeve that would just eventually come together somehow and look really cohesive, but have no real plan to do that. I think I still had that in the back of my head. And I do think that works for some people, but it definitely did not work in my case. So I found a tattoo artist up in San Francisco who did a lot of really delicate and really beautiful designs of birds. And I thought that this would be a good person to go to for the phoenix because the phoenix is a bird and i didn't think about how his style differed so much from the traditional style that i wanted so this tattoo artist did really really fine lines really delicate details he does almost like realism 
So that's very different from the traditional style that I was looking for. And that's not really something that crossed my mind when I went to this artist. I feel like there's gonna be a lot of cuts in this because I don't wanna come off as mean, but I'm just sharing my experience. And there's just like no way you're gonna be able to find out who this guy is. Okay, so the tattoo artist that I found in San Francisco was very expensive, almost just too expensive. And they're so far the most expensive tattoo artists that I've ever heard of charging this much. And I think that there was an air of elitism with the shop that I went to. Everyone in the shop was very, very expensive, like ridiculously expensive. And the person who tattooed me drew the tattoo onto my arm before they tattooed it. So I didn't see a stencil, I didn't see a sketch of anything before it was drawn onto my arm. And I think that that's something that also really talented artists do. And when you really trust your artist and you, when you really know their style, this is an amazing way to get tattooed and some people are so talented. But since I was going in kind of blind to this experience, this is the first time anyone's ever drawn on me. I had expected to see a stencil or see a sketch beforehand, but when you're getting tattooed, you're so excited. And I had been waiting for this appointment for like months and months and months, like super booked up guy. Obviously he's a great tattoo artist, but like I said, there was just that lack of communication there and understanding. So I do have a good portion of this original tattoo still on my arm and it's mostly on the underside of my arm. So you don't see it very often in most of my pictures because obviously I don't take pictures with my arm like in out. As you can see, the lines are very delicate and very thin compared to the other lines on the outside of my arm. I think that the bird is really nice and there's nothing about it that I dislike. I honestly think it's a good tattoo. I think the placement is nice. It's a little low on the arm, but there was one main problem I had with this tattoo. So prior to the appointment with the tattoo artist, I did show photos of Phoenix tattoos that I did like, but I didn't show him any photos of tattoos of Phoenixes that I didn't like. And I wasn't able to really communicate what about certain Phoenix tattoos I didn't like. And now looking back on it, it's a certain type of feather design that I really didn't like when it was on the skin. And of course, drawing freehand, he ends up doing exactly those type of feathers on my arm. So like I said, he did draw the tattoo on my arm before we got it tattooed, but I feel like a lot of you may be able to relate to this. When you are first starting out getting tattooed, you don't want to create any problems for the tattoo artist. And especially when I was at this really expensive tattoo shop in San Francisco, I was really young and I just kind of went along with whatever they wanted. And I did feel a lot of pressure to kind of like fit into what the tattoo artist wanted me to do. And I didn't really think about exactly what I wanted. And that's definitely on me. I should have been able to identify exactly what it was that I didn't like about certain Phoenix tattoos and communicate that to my artist ahead of time. So I ended up getting those feathers on my arm, the feathers that I didn't like. And when I stood straight with my arms in, all you really saw was the feathers on my arm right here. And that just really bothered me. It's not that they were done poorly. It's just like one of those things that just bothered me. I know other people didn't think it was that bad, but yeah, it was just one of those things. It was like constantly bothering me and I knew I didn't like this type of feather. I think I have a photo of what the feathers look like before I got any laser done. So I only have one photo because I knew within a month of getting this tattoo that I was going to get the feathers lasered off. But I do have one picture and I think you might look at it and think that's not that bad, but it really bothered me. 
And it's just one of those things that like personally I couldn't get over. In this picture, you can also see how long my hair was. I think that's the longest I ever had it. But yeah, that is me. So this was a really difficult decision and it was really awkward for me because I didn't really know how to explain it to the tattoo artist who tattooed these feathers in the first place. And we did have a follow-up appointment that I ended up canceling. And I did end up, I feel really bad, but I did end up ghosting this tattoo artist because I just couldn't tell him that there was this lack of understanding and communication on my part. And I ended up with something that I didn't want on my arm. So I ended up getting that lasered and I have not spoken to that artist since then. So um, I don't know if he, he's never reached out to me to ask me any follow-up questions. It's just kind of, we left it where it was. I didn't love the vibe of that tattoo shop. Like I said, it was really expensive. While I was getting tattooed, the tattoo artists were all being very judgmental of other tattoo artists. Like while we were tattooing, they were talking bad about like the tattoo shop across the street. So it was a very weird experience in general. So I kind of just wanted to wipe my hands clean of that whole experience. And my focus was on getting the feathers gone. And I had no plans of what I was gonna do with the tattoo after I just knew I needed the feathers gone. So I found a place to get laser tattoo removal that was really close to where I was working at the time. At the time, I was an intern for this headphone company in Santa Cruz as well. And I would go on my lunch breaks to get laser tattoo removal. And when I tell you guys this was like the worst time of my life, I think it was the worst time of my life. I knew that I was somewhat better off because I only had lines to deal with, but the laser technician that I went to was also very, just a character in himself. And my friend Jesse came with me to all my laser appointments and I thank her endlessly for that because I really needed her support there because getting laser was just the absolute worst. It felt horrible. It was super expensive. Like I said, I was interning at a headphone company. Like I wasn't making that much money. So I was pouring a lot of money into this and it was so painful. And I would just get it done as quickly as possible and just suffer. And at this time, I really disliked tattooing in general. And my focus was just getting this laser done with but I just couldn't think about any future tattoos at this time because it was such a horrible experience and it was really painful and the healing was really bad. It was just bad. It was just a bad time. And this is why it's been such a long period since that initial tattoo appointment because I took a huge break in between having laser done and then going to get my sleeve worked on again. I wanna say I took a full two years before I decided to get tattooed again. So I didn't get the feathers completely lasered off. I got them light enough to where something could go on top of them. That's because I really couldn't handle any more laser sessions. I think I did three or four sessions before I completely couldn't even think about going in to get laser again. And I feel like I've made my arm super sensitive from going to these laser sessions because anytime I get work done on like this part of my arm, it's like the worst pain ever. But when I get tattooed anywhere else on my body, it's like I can handle anything, but my arm is so sensitive because of this time. And like, I really just don't like getting tattooed here anymore because of that experience. But I still do it. I just hate it. So like I said, it took about two years for me to approach getting tattooed on my sleeve again after getting laser. So for two full years, I would kind of hide the fact that I had half of a lasered off tattoo right on my arm and I would wear a lot of sweaters or like cardigans or like three quarter sleeves where you could just see like the end of my tattoo coming out of my sleeve and you can really see like the half lasered off part. 
So this was definitely a struggle for me. And I knew I wanted to get tattooed. I still loved tattoos at this point, but I just couldn't come to the idea of getting tattooed again in the place that I had laser. So I took a really long time, but I took a really long time to make sure I would get it right the second time around. So the second time around, I did so much research before I landed on my tattoo artist. And I have a video that I will link now on how to find a tattoo artist where I kind of talk about my process of finding a tattoo artist and looking at a huge catalog of their work and saving it to make sure it's what you want long term. So like I said, it did take a while, but I eventually decided that I wanted to incorporate the Phoenix sleeve as an entire piece on my arm instead of doing that kind of individual tattoo style that I had initially thought I would do. So on Instagram, I found Joseph Karam, and this is one of the first tattoos that I saw on his page that made me just immediately be obsessed with his work. And when I saw this tattoo, I was like, that's the kind of sleeve that I want. It has everything I like. It has really dark blacks, the cool flowers. I love how everything flows. So I sent him a very long email. And my email included just a description of what I have currently, a bunch of photos. And I said, I love your tattoo style. I would love it if you could incorporate this into a full sleeve for me. I sent him a bunch of photos of how the laser looked and I asked him, would he be able to cover this up? I sent him the type of feathers that I really didn't like and I sent him a bunch of images of tattoos that he had done that I really, really liked. And I was really lucky enough for him to be willing to take on this tattoo for me. So Joseph is so incredible, such a kind hearted person so talented he designed the whole sleeve for me and he showed me the stencil ahead of time he's always created such an open and safe and welcoming environment to be tattooed in and it really changed my perception of tattooing from before when i got the first part of my sleeve done so at the time that i found joseph i was still living in northern california and I did have plans to move to Southern California, but Joseph worked in San Diego. So the first appointment that I had with him was in person and it was, I did fly down to San Diego to have our first consultation and to see the designs that he had made for me. I know that that is a lot of work and that might surprise you guys that I did that. But like I said, this was such a huge, thing for me, my sleeve and just the whole journey I had been on. It was such a huge deal for me to get it right. And I really believe that Joseph was the one to do it for me. So I did put a lot of effort into traveling to San Diego to get tattooed by him. I did eventually move down closer to Joseph so I didn't have to fly anymore, but I started to get tattooed by him and he started to work on my sleeve. So I started working on my sleeve with Joseph in the middle to late of 2019. And it's kind of a bummer because once 2020 hit, my sessions did get interrupted by COVID. So I had to put even more pause on this sleeve. And if anything, this sleeve process has really taught me patience. I've been so patient with this sleeve. It was put on pause for COVID and when restrictions were lifted, we were able to schedule more tattoo sessions. So like I said, patience has definitely been a huge factor in this process. So we're at a point with this sleeve where we have completely finished the background. And I posted this picture to my Instagram story asking you guys what you think I should do in terms of coloring the sleeve, because I'm kind of at another standstill with my sleeve. I'm just at a point right now where I don't know if I should fully color in my sleeve or not. So that's what I asked you guys in my Instagram post and you guys had some really great suggestions on what I should do. Some of you suggested digitally coloring in the sleeve and seeing how it would look. Some of you suggested getting little bits tattooed with color and then seeing how that looks over time and building it up really slowly. I also really like that idea. 
because some of you suggested to get pops of color in the sleeve and see how that looks as well because it'll balance out a little bit better if I have some color in my sleeve along with the color in my shoulder. And I think you guys are right about that. So at the time being, I'm still thinking about it and I'm taking all of your suggestions. I think I will do some digital coloring and just see how I like it. But for now, it's just another element of waiting. And Joseph has been so incredibly kind. I've told him about everything I've been through with this sleeve and he has been nothing but welcoming and so generous with his time and his creative ability. So I'm so blessed having gone to Joseph. I really, really appreciate that tattoo artist. So I will keep you guys updated with any more progress that I do make on my sleeve. And I really want to keep you guys in the loop for this one because it's such a long process and you can really make it a lot easier for yourself than I'm making it for myself. But just know that there's not just one path to go down with tattooing. And if you don't get it right the first time, it's not the end of the world. I'm so happy with where my sleeve is today. And it's been such a long time, but I'm not really worried about quickly getting any tattoos. I am starting to enjoy just the process. But that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've made it to the end of this video, I really appreciate it. If you have, leave me this emoji in the comments so that I know that you are a real one. Bye guys.